Good evening and welcome again to the2012fad.com. I'm going to be your host tonight, Charlie Blue Hawk. And um, last night we chatted about super waves, super waves in the air above our heads. Well, hopefully way above our heads, traveling around a world on an average of 600 miles per hour. Tonight, I thought we would chat about super waves that are in all of our oceans. Yeah, isn't that a hoot? And I'm not talking about uh, the super secret submarines that actually have fle flexible skins and can dive down to the bottom of the oceans like 32,000, 35,000 feet, not even notice it. I'm actually talking about naturally occurring rivers that exist in every major body of water on the Earth. Imagine a river within a river, as you will. Um, the strongest, or perhaps the most obvious of these, are located in the Great Lakes between the United States and Canada. These massive landlocked seas have been known to swallow entire cargo ships whole, leaving no trace. This is the classic superwave. This is what people have attributed to UFOs, uh, the Bermuda Triangle, death rays, whatever. No, it's just, again, uh, a natural occurrence of the processes of the Earth. And again, we're dealing with water, lots of water, moving at the speed of sound. So what causes these superwaves? Well, the truth of the matter is no one really knows. But uh, just last year, a cruise ship, and you know how big those things are, encountered a superwave in the middle of the open ocean. I forget which ocean, I forget what year, I forget what cruise ship. Uh, you'll have to look that one up. So yes, you will have to do some research uh, listening to these little uh, video blogs. Anyway... This superwave, in the middle of an open ocean, nearly swallowed this entire cruise ship hole. Now, I know what you're thinking. I mentioned before the Bermuda Triangle. Ships have been disappearing there since recorded time. Well, that is true, but not because of anything natural. Our ancestors used massively large crystals as the source of their technology. We use electronics. They used crystals. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is a lot of our Technology is based on crystals. Silicon crystals are the processors in all of our computers. But our ancestors used crystals on a massive scale. And there are a lot of people who believe that some of their larger crystals, their larger devices, survive the sinking of their continent or the rising of the water. Again, lots of water and not that much land on this planet. Take a look at a globe someday and take a real good look. It's sort of scary. And anyway, this crystal that they believe is still running happily in the uh, Bermuda Triangle is still doing whatever it's doing and, you know, screwing, screwing our technology up. Uh, I personally have seen things just walking down streets that uh, have to be some sort of bizarre technology. I, uh, we'll get into that some other day. So anyway, what does this mean to us, you, me, right now? <clears throat> well, it means that the natural events that surround us every single day are now going to start increasing geometrically as that uh, darn dwarf star, dead star, keeps swinging back into the plane of our solar system. And all of a sudden we'll have 12 planets and not just our usual nine. And we'll be dealing with two suns, one alive, the yellow one we're used to, and one dead. It's, uh, it's dead companion, a brown dwarf star. Poor little thing didn't have enough mass to actually ignite. If you ever tried to light a barbecue, you know how that is. So anyway, here's some more fun facts for you to look up. A few years back, there was a fellow by the name of Charles Berlitz. It's the same fellow who got famous and rich teaching us to speak uh, a lot of different languages. He uh, mounted an expedition into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in about 1965. He was looking for Atlantis. Anyway, they did a deep sonar sounding of the floor in the mid-Atlantic, like 32,000, 35,000 feet deep. That's, that's a lot of water. And you know what they found at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? Skyscrapers. Yep, buildings still standing. Skyscrapers, just like we have today. Only these skyscrapers were at the bottom of and in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Doesn't that sense chills down your spine? Yeah, it makes me sort of think. He wrote a book on it, published it himself, I guess. And if you're lucky, you could probably find a copy somewhere. I had a copy when I was little, and it was a little, it was a black um, fabric cover, and I guess it was a hundred and I don't remember now, of course, about 165 pages. But it had um, 
copies of the sonar charts and it showed the, uh, the, the skyscrapers at the bottom of the ocean. That was really something. I'm going to try to find that book again. Now, another fun fact, look up the uh, USS Thresher. It was back in the late 1950s and was one of the earliest nuclear-powered submarines in the United States. It was reported lost off the coast of the USA in the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, it was exploring the huge and very extensive cave systems that honeycomb the entire Earth, but they were entering it from the Pacific Ocean side. USS Thresher was exploring the massive tunnels and cave systems under the west coast of the United States, state of California. And it continued its way underwater in these massive tunnels, these massive, huge tunnels under the United States until it actually reached Nevada. It actually was underwater in tunnels, a nuclear-powered submarine. Again, these things are pretty big. It was navigating these rivers under the west coast of the United States. Got as far as Nevada, then it disappeared without a trace and was never heard or seen from again. I imagine <laughs> they weren't too keen on sending a rescue ship. So imagine for a second that this is, again, a natural occurrence of our Earth, that our entire world is a network of natural, and in some cases man-made tunnel systems, massively huge, big enough for cities to be in and are in. There is a story, for example, from history, that in South America, the ancient uh, Incas, I think it was, in order to escape the uh, Spanish conquistadores, actually moved themselves and their gold into a natural highway that runs all the way from the southern tip of South America in Argentina all the way to the very center of the United States. Seems that you can walk the entire way. And there are natural streams.